Sam Levitt here, Diamond Side with Coach Cohen Nicholson. Prior to Game Two of this divisional series between Harwich and Orleans, and Coach, you said to us a couple of days ago that once the playoffs started, it was going to be a new season. How big was the Game One win? Huge. You know, it's huge to go to Harwich and, and get Game One, and then be able to come back and have to win one or two. And hey, it's, this thing is far from over. Our, our work's cut out for us. Uh, you know, we think we have the right guys lined up. We got Eric Cobb tonight, and if needed, we have Jimmy Reed to go, go either game three tomorrow or game one against you know the winner of Whitey Chatham so yeah you know right now we couldn't be in a better spot you know it's better to be 1-0 than 0-1 and uh, you know our guys played really well and and uh, you know we got to have a short memory we can't you know I, I said after the game on whatever night it was I guess two nights ago I said I'm I said I'm actually going to go enjoy this for about an hour and then I start thinking about today so um, looking forward to tonight. And before game one, you told us that pitching was going to carry your team. Some start from Matt Boyd in game one, huh? Yeah, Matt had a really, really good start. As good a start as he's had all summer. Um, you know, pitched into the eighth, went seven plus, and I think had 11 strikeouts and a couple walks and I think three hits and just kind of kept those guys off balance all night. You know, was throwing everything for strikes. He was getting ahead of hitters, throwing breaking balls and sliders and change-ups, and they were just off balance all night. And um uh, he did a terrific, terrific job, and uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but when he threw his bullpen, Al Leiter came down, and you know Al has kind of become a, a friend of mine, and he came down and talked to our hitters and kind of monitored Matt's bullpen, and I, I really think that Al had a lot to do with uh, Matt's performance. You know, he told him a couple real simple things, and I think Matt took those into the game with him, and you know, I sent Al a text, and I said, hey, man, I... You know, we got to tip our hat to you. I think you had a, I think you had a big influence on Matt's performance. So thank you. And speaking of lefties like Al Leiter, like Matt Boyd, Jared Arakawa makes a start for you tonight. What are the expectations for him? Well, I think you know, knock on wood, you you should see a lot of strikes, and you should see him keep the ball down. And hey, you know, it, he just has to be who he is. He's a he's a command guy. He's going to throw a lot of strikes. He's uh, he's got a plus plus change. He's going to throw a little cutter slash slider and. Uh, hopefully he can have the kind of success and result that Matt Boyd had the other night. Of course, you get the off day due to the rain out. Does it help you a little bit because of the state of the bullpen? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, as well as I and everybody out there knows that we're we're short down in the pen. You know, we've got a nine-man staff right now, and uh, it was big for Croc. Uh, uh, in fact, I asked him today. I saw him in the clubhouse, and I said, hey, we're probably the same situation if you're okay, and we might give you the ball in the eighth. So that's... Hopefully the plan. If not, you know, we got Chase and we have PC and we have Pfeiffer and uh, we're going to be just fine down there. And then, of course, let's go back to game one late in the game for a second because eighth inning, you take Matt Boyd out. You bring in Kyle Crockett for the six out save like we just mentioned. Why did you choose to do that it, 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 as opposed to bring in somebody like a Pat Christensen to bridge the gap? Well, we thought we thought um, Croc being left-handed would be a little bit more effective against him than, than a right-hander. Uh, at least that's what the numbers told us. And so that's what we decided to do. And, you know, Croc has been our, you know, kind of our go-to guy. He's our closer. And we thought, you know, Brandy, I thought he he was our best option. And, uh, you know, it worked out. Okay, and Steve Engler, the manager opposing you in the dugout tonight, one manager of the year announced yesterday. How happy are you for him? A good friend yeah, of yours. Yeah, yeah, really happy. Stevie does a, he does a great job with those guys, man. They love playing for him. Uh, he has he has a lot of fun managing that club. You know, they they were taking BP in the rain yesterday, and and he and his coaching staff got out and took some swings. And uh, I wish I could be a little bit more like him. I wish I could relax and have a little bit more fun like Stevie. You know, but uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. And he's done a great job with Harwich all summer. And I, I think from you know kind of day one, I think they've been the like I said earlier. I think they've been the best team on the Cape. I know Kituit is awfully good, and they won 30 games, but. Um, Harwich is awfully good. I, they've lost a couple guys, you know. Austin Wilson has gone home. He got hurt, and and their catcher Austin had to go home. Um, so they're good, and he uh, well well deserved. Offensively, you struggled at the end of the season. Angelo Labruna comes up with a, a huge RBI triple just to get the weight off your back a little bit. But the rest of the game in Game One, a little bit silent. What was the problem from innings three to nine? I think it was, the problem was their pitching. You know. Uh, the, you're going to see good arms the rest of this playoff series, and that was a typical Cape game. It was good defense. It was good pitching on both sides, and we got timely hitting. You know, they loaded the bases in the first inning with nobody out, and uh, I think that 
that really that really changed momentum. Even though it was a first inning, I think it kind of took momentum away from them and gave kind of pushed it into our dugout. Even though they wound up getting a run, but uh, we were really happy with that. You know, bases loaded, nobody out, and they we came out of that first inning down one nothing. It was like, okay, let's go. We're ready now. We're we're all right. And and uh, you know, like I said, it worked out, man. Right. Finally, a lighter note. Your Los Angeles Lakers had quite the week. What do you think? Ah, I couldn't be happier with, with uh, Steve Nash, Donna's favorite player, and I love Dwight Howard. And uh, it's going to be nice to see those guys in purple and gold. Man, I just told Stevie, I said, hey, your Celtics are in trouble. <laughs> so we might have to make a make a little wager on that. So I I think, uh, yeah, they're going to be fun to watch. They're going to be really fun to watch. And uh, I think they got a real chance to make a run, you know, next year. We'll see. They're you know, they're awfully good with Kobe and Nash and Dwight Howard and, and Meta and Gasol. I'm really happy they kept Gasol. I love Powell. Donna loves Powell. Donna loves Steve Nash. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a it's going to be a nice year in the uh, in our household. Okay, great. Good luck tonight, Coach. All right, thank you, Sam. All right, that was Coach Kelly Nicholson here on the Kelly Nicholson Report, Game Two of this divisional series, coming up next on the Cape Cod Baseball Network.